To construct a jellyfish topology, one can simply take the following steps. First, pick a random switch pair with free ports for which the switch pair are not already neighbors. Next, join them with a link and repeat this process until no further links can be added. If a switch remains with greater than or equal to two free ports, which might happen during the incremental expansion by adding a new switch, these switches can be incorporated into the topology by removing a uniform random existing link and adding links to that switch. For a particular equipment cost, using identical equipment, the jellyfish topology can achieve increased capacity by supporting 25% more servers. This higher capacity is achieved because the paths through the topology are shorter than they would be in a fat tree topology. Consider a topology with 16 servers, 20 switches, and a fixed degree of 4 for both the fat tree topology and the jellyfish random graph. In the fat tree topology, only 4 of 16 servers are reachable in less than 5 hops. In contrast, in the jellyfish random graph, there are 12 servers reachable. By making more servers reachable along shorter paths, jellyfish can increase capacity over a conventional fat tree topology. So while jellyfish shows some promise, there are certainly some open questions. First, how close are these random graphs to optimal in terms of the optimal throughput that could be achieved for a particular set of equipment? Second, what about topologies where switches are heterogeneous with different numbers of ports or link speeds? From a system design perspective, the random topology model could create problems with physically cabling the data center network. And there are also questions about how to perform routing or congestion control without the structure of a conventional data center network like a fat tree.